Most prepper pantries are not stocked with survival food. They are stocked with future garbage. You see a fortress of cans, bags, and buckets, a bulwark against the unknown. But what's really there is a ticking clock. That can of beans is slowly corroding from the inside out. That bag of flour is a future paradise for weevils. That sense of security is an illusion, destined to crumble into a pile of rot and waste. This isn't pessimism, it's chemistry. Welcome to the science of rot, a silent war being waged inside every food container on your shelf. The enemies are simple and relentless. Oxygen, moisture, and light. Oxygen is the great oxidizer. It fuels the reactions that make your crackers go stale and your oils turn rancid. Moisture is the elixir of life, not just for you, but for the bacteria, yeasts, and molds eager to devour your supplies. And light, especially sunlight, is a silent assassin, degrading vitamins and nutrients, bleaching away color and value. Understanding these three enemies is the first step. Defeating them is the key to what seems like magic, but is pure science, food immortality. Let's begin with a substance that has mastered this chemical warfare perfectly, honey. Picture a jar of pure golden honey. Now let's zoom in, pushing past the thick, viscous surface, diving down to the molecular level. What you see is a brutal alien landscape. It's an incredibly dense world packed with sugar molecules, leaving almost no room for anything else especially not for free water. This creates a powerful physical force known as osmotic pressure. Now imagine a single microscopic bacterium foolishly lands in this environment. Biology dictates that water will always move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration and a bacterium cell is about 80% water. The honey, by contrast, is a water desert. Instantly, a violent process called plasmolysis begins. The extreme osmotic pressure of the honey starts ripping the water molecules right through the bacterium's cell wall. Its internal structure collapses, its life force is sucked away, and the cell implodes from catastrophic dehydration. This microscopic execution is happening constantly, and it is the secret to honey's eternal shelf life. This isn't just a laboratory theory, it's proven archaeological fact. For millennia, humans have recognized honey's unique power. When archaeologists cracked open sealed pots inside 3,000-year-old Egyptian tombs, they found honey that was still perfectly preserved, still completely edible after 30 centuries in the dark. But this incredible natural defense has one critical weakness. Honey is hygroscopic. That's a scientific term meaning it is incredibly thirsty for water. It actively pulls moisture straight from the surrounding air. If you leave a jar of honey open in a humid room, it will slowly drink that moisture, diluting its own sugar concentration. As the water content rises, that lethal osmotic pressure weakens. The microscopic killing field becomes a swamp, giving dormant yeast spores the chance to activate and begin the process of fermentation. This is why the single most important factor for storing honey is not the jar but the seal. That airtight lid is the only barrier standing between an immortal food source and a spoiled fermented mess. A tight seal is non-negotiable. And speaking of essential barriers, if you want to build a mental fortress against bad survival advice, make sure you are subscribed. We are decoding the apocalypse one sketch at a time, and you do not want to miss the next lesson. So we have our perfect sweetener, an energy source that literally cannot spoil. But you cannot survive on sugar alone, no matter how miraculous its preservation. Honey offers a powerful blast of carbohydrates, essential for quick energy, but survival is a marathon, not a sprint. Your body has other, more complex needs. It requires proteins to repair muscle and tissue, and healthy fats to regulate hormones and absorb vitamins. A diet of pure honey would eventually lead to severe nutritional deficiencies, muscle wasting, and a compromised immune system. True preparedness is about creating a resilient system, and that means stocking calories in bulk that provide complete nutrition. We need foods that can sustain us, not just give us a temporary rush. We've seen how honey utilizes osmotic pressure to keep bacteria at bay. Our next staple food relies on the complete elimination of a specific chemical component, fatty acids. This volatility of fatty acids is exactly why storing brown rice is a rookie mistake, while white rice is a survival king. Picture a single grain of brown rice. It's a complete seed, wrapped in its bran and germ. These layers are where its nutrients and natural oils are concentrated. But these very oils are its Achilles heel. They are a ticking clock. When exposed to the oxygen in the air, a process called oxidation begins. Think of it as a form of molecular rust. The fatty acids break down, becoming rancid. Within six, maybe 12 months, that nutritious grain is not just unpalatable, it's spoiled, emitting a chemical odor, a faint signal of decay. 
Now, contrast that with a grain of white rice. It has been polished, its volatile bran and germ layers stripped away. What's left is almost pure crystalline starch, a chemically stable carbohydrate. Without the fats to oxidize, it becomes a bastion of longevity. Kept dry and sealed, it can lie dormant, perfectly preserved for 30 years or more, waiting to provide pure reliable energy when it's needed most. This chemical stability is the difference between a six-month liability and a 30-year asset. But having a mountain of pure energy is only half the battle. Surviving on starch alone is a slow decline. And worse, surviving on pure protein is a rapid, catastrophic failure. This introduces a terrifying paradox known as hidden hunger or, more starkly, rabbit starvation. Imagine a survivor weeks into a crisis. They've successfully hunted. They're eating rabbit meat every day. Their stomach feels full. They don't have hunger pangs. Yet, they are getting weaker, nauseous, and disoriented. They are biologically starving to death despite eating what seems like a plentiful source of food. The problem lies deep within our own physiology. Your liver is a magnificent biochemical processing plant, but it operates under strict rules. It has a finite capacity for metabolizing protein. To properly process the amino acids in protein for energy, it absolutely requires the presence of fats or carbohydrates. Without them, the system gets overloaded. Think of trying to run a high-performance engine with only gasoline but no oil. It will seize up and destroy itself. That's precisely what happens inside the body. The biological consequence of this imbalance is deadly. As the liver struggles to process an overwhelming load of lean protein, it fails to properly convert the toxic byproducts. Specifically, ammonia, a natural result of protein metabolism, begins to accumulate in the bloodstream. This is not a gentle process. It's a rising tide of poison. The body is effectively poisoning itself from the inside out. The initial symptoms are nausea, diarrhea, and a deep fatigue that no amount of rest can cure. If the diet isn't corrected, it leads to cognitive decline, organ failure, and eventually, death. This is why a stockpile consisting solely of lean jerky, dried fish, or plans to hunt lean game like rabbit is a tragically flawed strategy. The solution, understood by our ancestors for millennia, is fat. The antidote is storing pure, rendered fats like ghee or tallow, or stocking high-fat canned meats like salmon or corned beef. A few spoonfuls of stable fat mixed with that lean protein is all it takes to balance the equation. It gives the liver the cofactor it needs to do its job, turning a dangerous meal into a life-sustaining one. So, as we bring these ideas together, we see that the real skill of survival isn't just about stockpiling. It's about understanding the science of rot and the science of nutrition. We've seen how oxidation turns the fats in brown rice rancid, destroying your food supply from within. We understand how crucial nutrient balance is, recognizing that a full stomach of pure protein can be a death sentence. And in our last discussion, we covered how osmosis can use microscopic amounts of water to destroy improperly dried foods. These aren't just tips, they are the fundamental unchangeable laws of biology and chemistry. A survival pantry isn't merely a hoard of food, it's a carefully balanced chemistry lab. The success of that lab is determined long before disaster strikes based on your understanding of these principles. Survival is a biological equation, not a contest of who has the most. In the end, nature does not care how much food you bought. It only cares about the chemistry of what you have stored. So now, I want you to audit your own stockpile. Let me know, what's the oldest item in your pantry right now? Comment down below.